The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 445 1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the January 26th Turnaround Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today. You and I, we get to go look at the circumstance of the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. We're going to go figure out what they're communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon on this terrific Tuesday. I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648, internationally, 727-445-1044. Of course, you can reach me by email, steve at tfnn.com, and inside the Tiger's Den, you can send me a message or post a message in there, and I will be happy to try to take a look at, uh, not try, but I'll take a look at whatever uh, symbols, equity, futures contract, commodity, whatever it is you're looking at, and, and attach my eyes to it. But let's go ahead and get this uh, show started. This is again turnaround tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show right now we got the dow trading up 269 points she's trading out at 16,154 s&p is up 26 points trading at 1902 you've got the nasdaq composite up 51 points trading at 4569 russell 2000 up 20 points she's trading at 10,016 gold is up 14 bucks trading at 1119 silver's up 29 cents trading at 1454 light sweet crude up a buck 55 trading at 3190 just about everything is to the upside out here uh, all the sectors with inside the s&p 500. They're all to the upside. Leading the charge dollar-wise. No, nothing unusual here. You've got price line up 18 bucks, about one and three tenths percent. AutoZone up nearly two percent. That's up 13 dollars. Cracker Barrel getting in on the action. Oh, I like that Cracker Barrel. Not necessarily their food, but it's fun to go in that uh, store and see all that old-time candy and and some of that uh, knee-high soda. That they still have in there. Cracker Barrel's up six dollars seventy four cents, up a little over five percent. Concho Resources up seven and three quarters percent, up six bucks. Uh, Graco Company up ten percent, up six dollars. Three M up four and a half percent. That's six dollars out there. To the downside, individual stock wise, Intuitive Surgical is the uh, leader dollar wise, up nine dollars and fifty cents, down uh, a little less than two percent. Polaris Industries down about nine percent. That's off seven bucks. Anacor Pharmaceuticals off 7.5%, down about uh, $7 out there. But let's get this uh, show started here. Let's go figure out what the markets are doing. Of course, we want to take a look at different time frames out here. But uh, many of you want to understand, hey, what did the market do yesterday after we got off the air? What's it doing today? Couldn't get any better signals out here. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow being the strong uh, link uh, right here in the market, this is a 30-minute chart that you and I are taking a look at. And on that 30-minute chart coming off of that uh, bottom out here that took place at about uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, that was back on uh, January the 20th, um, coming off of that bottom, what the Dow did was it moved higher, created that wonderful North Shore seventh wave pattern out there at 1030 in the morning. And this was back here on January 22nd. That was the high. Ever since that high had formed, we saw the uh, Dow go ahead and make a retracement. We'll take a look at the percentage retracement. But in making that retracement, what it did last night, coolest thing ever, 
um, was it went ahead and it moved down and it formed a, another North Shore wave. That came in at 4 o'clock yesterday or this morning. Um, all that nice work was done overnight. That way, for any of you that were in long positions in the market, you weren't getting stopped out. Your stops weren't getting taken out because the futures market was doing all of the heavy lifting. The best thing, you don't have to trade the futures market, but boy, how do you really trade what's going on in the equity market without understanding these wonderful patterns that set up like clockwork out here time and time again? So the market does what? Makes that nice little North Shore wave down into 4 o'clock in the morning and then starts moving higher. We are only in wave number 3 to the upside, and we are above yesterday's highs inside of the Dow. Pretty good chance that uh, the next time we're going to see any kind of turn inside the Dow is when? Wave number what? That's right. Probably wave number seven. But let's go see where's the price projection now inside of the Dow futures. Well, we said that the swing point from yesterday was taken out. We said that there was just a retracement that went on early this morning inside the Dow. And the Dow must have an A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's go figure that one out out here. Let's take a look at it. Let me go ahead and clean off this chart out here because we can always back in some of these levels of support and or resistance out here. But what you and I want to do is we want to go take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern, get in feel for where it is that price is headed to. So we know the low. That came in on uh, January 20th. That's going to be our A point. Our B point is out here as it made that seventh wave. That was in January 22nd makes a G wave, a seventh wave to the downside, as we said earlier this morning. Your one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. And you can see the retracement there, about a 0.618, 59.97 to be exact, if we want to be exact. But this says what? This says to you and I that the Dow futures, take a look at the 30-minute chart out here, they provide you and I with a price projection of 16,327. Is that where price is going to stop? I don't know. It might. But I don't think so. I think it's more likely to head up to 16,513 on this next move out here. Let's go take a look at expansions of swing points. Let's go see what kind of message we can get out of here. The Fibonacci expansion that we're going to take a look at is coming back to the January 19th high, down to the low out here on uh, January 20th. And the 1.272 expansion of that swing point gets you to 16,411. So I say more likely than not, where the Dow is headed to, you're at 16,066. 16,327, so that's about, what, 260 points or so, 250 points more north. Uh, add on to that, maybe it's going to be 16,411, so that's about, uh, what, 380 points or so. Maybe it's going to be 16,513, so now you're looking at about, what, 480, 60, 70, somewhere around there. That's what we've got left to go inside of the Dow, most likely before it makes its next high. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see some small retracements along the way. But the Dow right now is doing all of the heavy lifting. If we switch over, we go take a look at a, a daily chart out here for the Dow futures. That's where no, we're going to actually switch over and take a look at the Dow Jones index out here. We can see that uh, we have a rising advanced decline oscillator. It is above the uh, zero line out here. That bodes well. If we're going to take a look at where is price likely headed to here. We're going to look at retracements instead of expansion. So let's go to our retracement ruler out here. Let's take the easy retracement, easy peasy out here. We're going to go from the high from December 29th down to the low out here on January 20th. And that's got 16,300. 329 written all over it. That's nothing more than your dead cat bounce. That is your point three eight two retracement. Likely yesterday was nothing more than a C point of an A to B equals C D to the upside. If we try to uh, put that on this chart, I don't know if I can. Of course I can. I can do just about anything that I want. If you just set your mind to it. So our A point was there. Our C point was on the 22nd. And yesterday could have been the B or the yesterday the C point. This says 16,566 to 16,753. We'll be right back, folks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge for daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. 
As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 276, S&P's up 26 points. We're going out to St. Pete to speak with Lori. Lori, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Fine, thank you, Steve. Steve, I've been out of touch with the market for some time now, and uh, I wanted to make uh, some investment in the, or I was thinking about uh, COP, Conoco, Phillips, or B. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it is, uh, I, I'm not going to invest a whole lot of money, but I'd like to invest some. And um, I was planning on kind of seeing as it's going down real low, hoping to get into it and uh, at a low price and just keep it in there and not have to worry too much about what, about, you know, except waiting for it to go back up. And, of course, I like the dividend, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you when you make these trades or in, investments, so you've given me some some good pieces of information. Um, when you make your trades or investments, you know, will you monitor them, or are you just going to make it and stick it in the drawer? Um, are you going to uh, use stops? You know, just help me out. Just help me out there. What it is, Steve? Really, I would like to just kind of forget about them, but I won't really. I'll, I'll certainly keep watching to see what's going on. But the thing of it is, the idea is uh, hopefully that I can just, I'm 80 years old, would like to just put it in there and kind of just let it sit and uh, work its way back up and get some of the dividends. So with regard to that type of long-term trading strategy out there, one of the things that you and I would have preferred in the case of ConocoPhillips, and I'm looking at the monthly chart out here, uh, because this came back into its March 2009, uh, well, it was trying to get back to the March 2009 area, and the high of that was 31.48. And so far for the month, all we've seen is low of 32.77. So I would, my preference would be to have seen at least that level of, um, um, touched, meaning the, at least the high of 30. Um, sometimes the market doesn't always give us what we want, but if we could have seen, or if we see the 3148 level tested, meaning touched, 
this month. Uh, it doesn't look like, uh, um, actually, this is just the daily chart that I, no, this is a monthly chart. Oh, well, give me one moment here. I apologize. I don't know what happened. Okay. So this is the monthly chart, and it doesn't look like for the month it's going to have the same type of volume that this had back in March of 2009, which is a real nice thing. But I would say at this stage of the game, you need to wait for a test of that level as one of the metrics that I would take a look at. Okay? So that's the first thing, and that is uh, continue to watch it. Let this get down to the 3148 level. That would be one way of getting into it. If it rejects that, meaning it closes back above that, um, then you can uh, consider going ahead and taking that type of trade that you want. You're still going to want to have some type of stop in place out, out here. If I take a look at the weekly chart for ConocoPhillips, let me just uh, clean up my screen here and uh, see what this thing uh, did on its test back on the weekly basis. Give me a moment to uh, do that, see if I can get back to the uh, 2009 time frame. So I'm just curious. We know on the monthly, we're light in the uh, volume category. When it comes to the weekly, the weekly swing point, the number that you'd be looking at is probably 29.18. And that had volume of um, that had volume back there of uh, 124 million shares. Now, I'm guessing that you're not really paying attention to volume, but you know, you've called into a show where we're taking a look at technical analysis to make it determination as to what an equity wants to do. And last week we saw price move lower with 90 million shares. That's also another good thing with regard to perhaps taking a long trade in ConocoPhillips. The reason why I'm not suggesting for you to take a, a trade in this today is last week's uh, formation from a candle perspective, so we know we've got the right type of volume metric, But what and what we had last week was the formation of a nice hammer candle. Now a hammer candle provides you and I with a lot of information. It suggests that the market is trying to hammer out a bottom. That's what the volume metrics also suggested to you and I. But what this week in ConocoPhillips, what it hasn't done, it has not moved above the high of last week. And so it's possible that what ConocoPhillips is going to do, it's, if it closes below the low of 3271 this week, that is telling you both you and I that we're going to see some lower price out here because you never like to see a close below a hammer candle. Um, so this has not acted strong when I take a look at the weekly chart. When I pull up the daily chart, let's say it doesn't go back and do any of those tests out here, then what you would be looking for is a signal in order to perhaps get long this equity is you need to see a close above 3707 quite frankly preferably 4253 but at least above 3707 to give some type of indication that this would be some type of long play so to summarize your best trade on conical phillips is one a test and a rejection this month so uh, we only have a couple of trading days left, and that would be a test of 3148, closing back above it, and that would be a signal to go ahead and take a long trade. And if this closed below 2630, that would say you got to call into some other host here uh, or call into my show, but uh, that would say that there's something that's really wrong inside ConocoPhillips. Does that, does that help you with regard to at least my thoughts on it right now? Yes, it does. Uh, let's see, you were going back, I think, to when you said the figure 3148. That was in 2009? It was. That the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the range. So the range from low to high in March of 2009, the low was 2630, and the high was 3148. And it's coming back into that level in a real nice way from a volume metric standpoint. But the problem is, until you actually, uh, you, the only way to pass a test around here when it comes to technical trading is you've got to touch the swing point. You don't have to get to the bottom. But you've got to at least test the uh, top of it. And we don't have a successful test. So when I take a look at just simply market profiles provided to us by our friends at uh, TAS Market Profiles, that's another way for us to be able to identify some levels of support and resistance. And in this case here, ConocoPhillips is trading below all of those levels. So it is not out of the woods, even though it's been pulling back on light volume. And then we've got that hammer candle from last week. And there was also a hammer candle on the daily basis. And price is not typically when the market's trying to hammer out those lows, um, it starts to move above the uh, hammer candle, and we haven't seen that take place yet inside of ConocoPhillips. Uh, Steve, I was looking at the chart right here, and my uh, 2009, uh, for February 2009, the low there says 34, but you're saying 3148. I'm looking at the month of March. And I maybe if I said February, I apologize. I'm looking at the month of March. March. No, you didn't say February, but uh, I was just saying that on my chart here that I'm looking at, uh, on the monthly, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I've got the weekly. I'm sorry. That's the no, problem. that's okay. Hey, I make that. I make. I, I do that all the time. I, I did it while I was talking to you. I was saying, I think I'm looking at the month, and then I looked up, and it looked like I was at the daily chart. So, you know, that that that's okay. So it's a monthly chart right now. It's monthly and weekly are giving us nice metrics. The problem with the weekly that I have is that you had a hammer candle last week, and we have seen the market move lower. And I like to uh, I like to blend candles together, and um, and because I think that they provide us with a bunch of information. And that says that this week's trading makes last week's candle not a hammer candle at all. So I, I'm just a little bit concerned in the case of ConocoPhillips. Okay. Uh, but uh, do you kind of think that I might be on the right track when I'm saying as long as these uh, two are so low, that chances are they will go back up again or somewhat go back up plus get the dividend? Yeah, I, I think I think you are absolutely looking in the right uh, sector, in the right area. I would say that um, as I take a look at Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil looks like a better trade setup to me. Uh, I mean, right now this is really trading back into the lows here from August of 2011. Um, Lori, we've got to go to a break. If you want, you can hang on through the break out here. We can come back. Yeah, I'd like to. Okay. All right, thank you very we'll go, much. Steve. We'll I'll be on back. the I'll stay on the line. Perfect. Okay, so we'll stay on the line. We'll take a look at uh, Exxon Mobil, and it looks like we're going to be looking at Facebook with Jim and Oldsmar as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days, and it will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com welcome back 
back, uh, folks. Dow's up 279. S&P is up 27. We're on the line with Lori from St. Pete, Florida. And in that last segment, we were taking a look at, uh, yes, Conoco Phillips. Yes, yes ma'am. Please, do please, in a minute. You know, I was um, trying to go over what we just talked about. And uh, I do love charting. I do like watching the volume and the swing points. But the thing of it is, um, I wanted to, use, you know, I wanted to be able to do this in a smart way and watch what you're saying. But when I look at my monthly, go back to... Um, of March 2009, uh, my low is 34.12, and you're saying yours is 31.48. I don't know how why we would have such a, a discrepancy in price here. I, I can't tell you. My my high for the month of March of 2009 is 31.48, and my low for March of 2009 is 26.30. Oh. And, and I don't know what, what charting service do you uh, do you well, use. Actually, I have I have two of them here. I have um, the Scott Trade Elite, and also I have um, the Time in the Trade charts. Hmm. I, I don't know. Well, the last one sounds really good. <laughs> uh, they're both the same, though. Yeah, the same. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you there. Um, but well, uh, Steve, could I ask you a question then? If I'm going to have to go by my chart, and because I I don't have yeah, yours, figured. absolutely. Could I go by what I see here on my chart, which is the low for 2009 is um, 34.12, and that swing point. See, right now my charting shows that it's closing. It's right. I mean, the price is uh, 35.36. Is that correct? Is that well around that price? Yeah, I'm at 35.30 right now, but that's oh, okay, yes. This, so, okay, yeah. 30, so then this here shows a low for the month, 32.71. And the high forty seven dollars and seventy seven cents for the uh, this sure month yeah here. yeah and we've got the, we've got we our data matches for the current month that's correct well, now, I, you know sure you can do anything you want I was just giving you my take um, I'm very comfortable with the uh, data matrix that are coming out of the e signal system but look you know data is data and uh, and so I'm not sure which is correct but what you should be doing in monitoring that trade is you really should be looking at that March with regard to conical Phillips you really should be monitoring that March 2009 swing point if you have tested it whatever charting service it is that you're using it and you get a close back above that high that in essence would go ahead and uh, give you a, a signal that you've rejected a swing point on price and uh, volume out there um, you know and that's, that's that, point of uh, the um, March 2009 monthly above that swing about I mean I'm sorry about that uh, price yeah, you need to reject it. So the way that we take a look at swing points around here is we like to see price come into a swing point. That's where Tom likes to use that expression, squawk, walk, and talk. And um, what we like to see is a rejection of that swing point. We like to see a couple of things. One, is price moving into a swing point, in this case here, as it's coming down with light volume? If it is and it tests it, means it gets anywhere inside that swing point and it closes back above it, then you have a, uh, then you've got a, a rejection on price and volume. Now, what we prefer to see before stepping into a trade then, especially when you've not tested the low, is you like to see some kind of sign of strength coming off that bottom. And that's where you would go ahead and shift to a daily time frame to see if you can get that sign of strength. Then, if you get a sign of strength, you will typically get some type of retracement, some type of small pullback. And if that small pullback is on light volume, that would actually be your signal to go ahead and take a long trade. Now, that would be the proper way to use uh, the art of timing the trade chart, swing point analysis, the whole nine yards out there. Um, and I don't know what else to say. I was suggesting to you that you might want to take a look at Exxon Mobil um, because Exxon Mobil is really a better looking chart to me. And when I take a look at, let me put up the right ticker symbol, XOM. And when I take a look at Exxon Mobil and I come off of the lows from back in 2002, July of 2002, we can clearly establish a trend line from that low, which on my charts is 29.75, and the next low out here is the one from July of 2010, and that's at 55.94. And throughout all of the carnage with inside this uh, this uh, sector of the market, ExxonMobil has held that trend line.
And so now it hasn't broken out or anything, but I do like the setup in Exxon Mobil more so than ConocoPhillips. So I just really threw that out there for you to take a look at as well. I like that better than uh, you had asked about BP as an example. And when we take a look at uh, BP, um, you know, what BP has done so far this month, it's actually forming a nice hammer candle. That alone is not necessarily enough to uh, take a trade. I'm guessing that back in June of 2010 was when BP had the uh, spill in the uh, Gulf of Mexico because of that big, you know, two billion volume bar. So you're never going to really get down there. But you're trading, BP is trading inside that swing point from June of 2010. And your better setup there is a test of $26.75. That would be one test. Or if you think that there's a low out here, you're looking for some type of sign of strength out here. And when I take a look at this uh, volume matrix here over the past few days, I don't necessarily see a huge sign of strength to tell me that BP has made the bottom. So that's my that's my quick take on those. Any any questions? Uh, uh, I would like to ask you, um, um, I know what you're saying about uh, Exxon, but I don't have that much money to invest, and I hate to just buy a few shares if I can buy. I'd like, I know what you're saying, probably that isn't the way to think about it, but I'm just thinking, you know, if you only have like four or $5,000 to invest, that may be going with BP or COP, that I might have a better chance of making more money in the longer run. No, what you would actually be doing is, uh, you, you, if you can say that, I would say you also have the ability to make to lose more money in the long run. So what you what you want to do with regard to, you know, look, I believe that position sizing is the is the is the most important element in trading anything. And position sizing just simply tells you what it is you're going to risk on a trade and how many shares it is that you're going to buy so that you're not overextended. And that is the most element of trade. That's the most element. That's the most important element of trading. You can take all of the swing point analysis and everything that I've done that we've looked at and throw that out the window. But if you don't use proper position sizing, that's when you can get into trouble. You can buy two or three shares or something and make just as much money as 10 shares on something else so so I, I would just uh, I would caution you on on that logic okay uh, I know that uh, XLM has a much uh, smaller interest and I guess I was kind of looking at the rate of interest that it was going to uh, put out as uh, I held it for a dividend is that what you're saying uh, I'm sorry, dividend, dividend. No, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, obviously a lot of factors go into trading and investing. I'm, I'm giving you my technical take on, you know, where where these things are trading into. If it were me and I was putting my money to work, which I, I'd considered ExxonMobil actually this morning, we went ahead and bought a couple of other equities. Um, I would choose ExxonMobil over, um, over ConocoPhillips or British Petroleum. But uh, I think the sector. Right. I think the, the sector is the right sector. I think you're in the right spots out here to be poking around. I really value your opinion, and I appreciate your time very much. I thank you with all my heart. My pleasure, and we'll all look right, forward to you. speaking to you again. That was Lori in St. Pete. We're going to go down the street to Jim in Oldsmar. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Now, we're about to go to a hard breakout here, so if you could hold on through this break. And we come back, we're going to take a look at Facebook. Tell me what you're doing so I can look at it throughout the break. Are you in it? Looking to get in it? Tell me what you're doing so I can assist you. I'm looking to uh, get initiate a, just a trade in it, a <laughs> short-term trade. Okay, so during this break, I'll take a look at that for you. We'll come back to uh, Jim. We'll take a look at Facebook. The Dow's up 264, S&P's up 25. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Folks, uh, Dow's up 277, NASDAQ Composites up 58, uh, Gold's up $15. We're going back out to Oldsmar, Florida to speak with Jim. We're taking a look at Facebook. And, Jim, you're taking a look at a long trade is what you said uh, during the uh, breakout here. So tell me what you're looking at, what your outcome is. Um, when you say trade, uh, tell me what you're trying to, you know, what's your time period. Uh, just give me a little bit more feedback. Well, it, it doesn't have to be a long trade. I, uh, I was thinking about getting into it in the morning, and they report earnings at the end of the day uh, or sometime tomorrow, and I was thinking, well, you know, Apple ran up today because of their earnings coming out tonight, and I thought maybe I could get in and out on a short trade or even hold it longer if you thought it was uh, it's going to go back up. I, it looks like to me that, it, that it's undervalued, and just wanted to hear your opinion. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I like technically that it did last week um, as it was moving lower. And that was that in the case of Facebook, uh, from a weekly perspective, it was dealing with the August 24th swing point. And, uh, Jim, that had volume on that swing point of 256 million shares. And on the pullback last week, it was with 151 million shares. So you had 151 going into 256. That's the type of uh, trade setup that you like going into a swing point. And then you had the ultimate of rejections. You had the ultimate of rejections because price moved higher. You formed a hammer candle. In this case here, we have seen Facebook during the week. All right, now it's basically trading flat compared to the close on Friday. Um, but, you know, it has not really violated the um, the integrity of that hammer candle. Uh, price during this week has come back and tested its TAS daily profile low of 81.64. That is held. There's weekly support. This is a weekly box that just formed this week that says 81.31, that that would be good. What I don't like about it is that both of the new boxes that have formed out here on their market profiles, both the daily and the weekly, and I'm looking at the support line, so that's the bottom line, the bottom larger green line and the larger blue line, both of those formed underneath the previous market profile. And that's always a warning message to me that uh, maybe this thing has not uh, finished moving to the downside. So you do have that nice rejection on the weekly price out here. But I think that, um, you know, is it 
it really worth the risk? I'd have to go back, and I would ask you to go back and take a look at Facebook and its earning metrics, like for example, and see how does it respond on, on earnings day. For example, uh, and, it, and it, I don't know that it works that well right now. Maybe it does, but Google happened to be one of those uh, chart, one of those uh, um, stocks where the way that it responded to its earnings painted the way for weeks to come with regard to price direction. So you didn't actually have to buy Google before the earnings announcement, because that usually came out in the afternoon. You could actually buy it in the pre-market, you could buy it the next morning, and you would have the direction. Um, and I don't know, you know, Facebook hasn't been around long enough probably to do that study, but I would at least do it out here. Technically speaking, um, you know, I see the bullish side. I see the cautionary side. If I look at the daily chart out here for you, the daily chart, um, you know, I don't have any real completed reversal type pattern or anything along those lines. Um, and on a daily basis, it didn't test the August 24th level out here. So I... I would I would rather see Facebook give you a signal as to which way it wants to trade and then go from there versus say, you know, kind of roll the dice here just because they're coming out with earnings. But so far yeah. it looks like so far it looks like it should move higher. But man, I can make the case that there's there's some cautionary winds out here when I, when we take a look at Facebook. All right. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's good. Uh, I, I do have 100 shares of Apple, and uh, I was hoping to maybe if the earnings were good. I'm, I was thinking, uh, I never know what they're going to say about their uh, way they monetize Yes, we do. We, we know they're going to say they made oodles of money. <laughs> and uh, which I'm sure they did. Uh, probably they're going to uh, beat numbers because of things going on in international markets out there. This is my this is my guess. Um, and uh, you know, and the numbers, and they're going to probably be buying back more stock with stock trading at 97.66. I'm I, I got to believe that that's coming. Uh, so they have, you know, they've got the war chest to, uh, they, they, Tim Cook knows how to deliver the proper message to the markets, and they got a war chest that's second to none out there. So if they want to support the stock, they'll give it all the good news. The question is going to be, what's the market going to do? And if the market does anything, it's going to go test that low from August 24th and probably find support there. So in the case of Apple, that would be the 122-ish, uh, what is the low? Uh, one, I'm sorry, 92, even Stephen out there. So it may get down in 10 that I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, just try one earnings play at a time. Sounds like you're already in Apple, so just stay there. Okay, well, I appreciate Alrighty. your info. Thanks for, for taking my uh, call and everything. My pleasure, and I'll be pulling for you on that Apple trade. And that's because I'm long the queues, so I am pulling for you. Let's okay. go to uh, Tom in Massachusetts. Tom, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Do we have Tom? Tom? Hello, Earth to Tom. I think we're trying to connect into him. So, uh, uh, um, so maybe Tom, if you're listening, you can call back in. Looks like we've got some uh, time out here. In the meantime, let's go take a look at a couple of other things that we. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside of uh, Goldilocks. Let me uh, open up a uh, chart here. Let me see if I can do this relatively. Quickly, I'm looking for my gold chart, um, a different chart than what you normally see. And I'm looking for gold priced in, well, let me try this one. Let's see. This is gold priced in a number of different currencies. Do I have it priced in euros out here? I do. So let me turn this off for a moment because we always take a look at gold priced in dollars, and that certainly is one way to do it. Let's get rid of the yen. Let's get rid of the South African rand. And uh, we do have gold priced in dollars. So this gives us a chance to look at gold both priced in dollars and euros out here. And what we can see, the nice thing with regard to gold priced in both of these currencies, we'll start off with euros first, and we can see that this has broken out. This broke out, really started to break out yesterday. It has uh, broken out uh, today by moving above that swing point from January 8th out there. And you like to see gold in multiple currencies breaking out and doing the same thing out here. 
What does that say? That says in euros, you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. When we take a look at gold priced in dollars, that's the bottom portion of my chart out here. You can see that it is trading above that same swing point from January the 8th out here. And quite frankly, I believe that it is gold priced in euros that gives you and I the absolute best message with regard to the direction of price. When everybody looks at the same darn chart, you thought I was going to say something else out here, everybody sees the same thing. But if you and I were sitting over in Europe, I promise you we would be taking a look at commodities, not just priced in dollars, but we would be taking a look at commodities priced in our currency as well out here. And uh, you go back and do the homework. You'll find out that the uh, signals coming from gold priced in euros provide better signals than gold priced in dollars out here. Now, what does that say to you and I? What that says to you and I is I'm drawing lines on this chart all over the place that really don't need to be here. This says to me, I, and I don't know about you, but I and subscribers, because we're long this commodity out here, and so we will be watching what happens when gold priced in euros gets up to probably that trend line, or even we'll probably move it down here for right now. When it gets down to this trend line right here, gold priced in euros, probably around the 1050-ish type mark. Uh, 1050 type mark. Right now, you need 1,034 euros for an ounce of Goldilocks. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back 
folks. Uh, Dow's up 279, S&P is up 27, and we've got our man Tom from Massachusetts back. Tom, thanks for calling back, and uh, thanks for uh, staying on hold. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, Steve. How about yourself? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, we just have about four minutes here. So you want to take a look at uh, the daily S&P biotech bull. Ticker symbol there is L-A-B-U. Tell me what you're doing, how I can assist you. Well, I got out yesterday. I got back in this morning at 848. And I'm just kind of wondering what your thoughts are about uh, either jumping out again today or maybe hanging on. A couple of the big uh, companies are coming up with earnings this week. Um, what 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 to give? Uh, what's one of the? I don't know the weighting inside here. Do you know of those companies that are coming out with earnings? What their weighting is yeah. inside? Celgene, Amgen, Biogen, Gilead. Let's look at Celgene here real quickly, since you threw that out there, and see if there's any kind of message out here in Celgene. Because you know, when I take a look at that ETF, there hasn't been much in the way of price movement out here. Um, so it certainly is not this sector of stocks that is pulling up the S and P 500. Um, you know, Celgene looks to me like this thing could stall out at the 10901 to 11248 level. Uh, you mentioned uh, Celgene. You said. Um, Gilead, G-I-L-D. Let's go see what yeah. uh, this equity is doing out here. Um, you know, Gilead, I haven't seen, I don't see much in the way of volume coming off of the uh, bottom out here from the trading day of January 20th. Um, you know, if this uh, if this doesn't hold 89.86, it's going to get down and test the lows from August of, to August 24th out there so that is uh, that's still an open uh, test for you uh, let's go back and take a look at LABD what you're looking for inside this because um, was it LABD LABU 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 out here what you uh, need to see in this ETF um, is you've got you're looking for this to get above eleven dollars and twenty cents but uh, you know I'm guessing from the way that you traded you would be out of it even if it got up there oh yeah yeah. So, you know, the best thing here's here's the problem with this with this sector and specifically this this ETF is that you're trading in a uh, TAS market profile that is pretty narrow. Maybe, you know, percentage wise, it's OK. But the bottom of the box is seven dollars and ninety six cents. The center of the box is nine ninety. In essence, you know, you're trading below that level right now. You'd have to ask yourself, why can't it get up there? Why can't it get up there on a day like today inside the S&P 500 in the markets? It's not. Uh, and the top of the box is 1120. So look, your entry in the $8 and change range sounds good. You've got a profit in it. Um, I'm not seeing anything of, you know, you've got some decent volume today, but there's, you know, there's probably better areas for you to take a look at. Um, yeah. Your better, your better buy on this, the way that you move in and out, is around that, uh, you know, is around that $8 level. You know, seven ninety six, eight dollars, eight oh five, something like this. Um, uh, you know, what you'd really like to see this thing do is clear some hurdles out here, and that hurdle would be about eleven dollars and twenty cents. So this morning's right, low, right. which was nine, uh, I'm sorry, which was eight dollars and sixteen cents. You know, that's the type of entry price into a narrow box like this, in my opinion. All right, Steve. Well, thanks for your advice. Appreciate that. My pleasure, and thanks for calling back in. That was Tom in Massachusetts. So to round things up here, folks, uh, uh, a nice day today. Really just offsetting a similar day to what we saw yesterday. So uh, the uh, bulls and the bears, they're still in the woods fighting out here. Um, I will say at this stage of the game here at 1.58 p.m., uh, the uh, the the bulls are the ones that have got the better of the market. But it's all going to be dependent upon the close. Can these advanced decline oscillators continue to trade above the zero line and then there's an apple so stay tuned folks david white he's going to be up next then we got tom o'brien and andy heck to take it on home thanks so much for joining me on turnaround tuesday i look forward to seeing you on wild and just wild wednesday take care folks Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, accurate, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.